Atlanta's number one hip hop station, Hot 107.9. Of course, it's me, the most energetic entertainer, here with another episode of Not Your Average Podcast, one of the number one producers in the galaxy. Word yeah. to God. My dog hit me in the bit. My boy, appreciate you, you having it? me. Yeah, yeah. First and foremost, if y'all can't see, can you, can you, can you? Can you yeah, show the shoes they, to the camera? They got like my logo for my company and all that other stuff. Shout so let's talk about it. Beware it. of the sound. Yeah. Your company? Make a sound is my company, so you got to beware of the sound. That's the whole little vibe that we got going. So you, you signing producers, artists? Man, we got a hell of a roster, man. We probably got 10 producers signed to us, um, four artists. So shit, we just running it up right that's now. That's fine. How could a producer that's watching this interview catch it, make his attention, and become a part of Beware of the Sound? I don't know. DM me. And then like, um, Do you actually check your DMs? Though? A lot yeah. of people be like, DM me. And your no, request I check, I check my own DMs, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it. Uh, I think it's all six degrees of separation for meeting somebody. You know what I'm saying? So you might know somebody, or I think if you play the studios, what you know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna get to me if you got. Well, that's the biggest thing. Just make some heat. Mm -hmm. If you make heat, somehow it's gonna get to me. I promise facts, you. Facts. Big time. Well, first and foremost, we mm -hmm. appreciate you sitting down with us, man. Uh, come on, man. Let's see. Nominated for producer of the year, BET Hip Hop uh -huh. Awards 2022. What does that mean? Then? Shit, I need to keep working. You know what I'm saying? Like it's been that. dope. You know what I'm saying? To like be nominated, that. but um, I ain't really one of these people that caught up in all the little, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. trivial type shit. You know, like I really want to like continue to open the door and be a testimony for up and coming producers or anybody that's an artist that might have seen like trials and tribulations I went through in my career or whatever to let you know that's a very long career. If you mm -hmm. really invest in yourself and you invest into the music, it could be a long, long career. And I just want to use this shit as a platform and just like put the next nigga on, you know? Big time. And so that right there is inspiring in itself. Who were some upcoming producers around the time when you were getting interested and wanted to produce and make it? Shit, like back in the day, well, you know, my lineage is kind of crazy. Like my demo had Kanye West, mm -hmm. No ID, Bugs, mm -hmm. all these different people. But as far as like um, people that were up and coming when I was starting as well, um, shout out to my dog Ayo, the producer, Keys, mm -hmm. Boy Wonder, um, like all these different niggas, you know what I'm saying? This is like a, um, I was kind of before, like I was like 2007, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think in that era, all the heavy hitters was running the shit, Timberland, Pharrell, Swiss, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I was able to sneak in and just open the door for the next ones, you know? For so. sure. I mean, with the multiple number ones and hits that you've created, take us to a regular studio session with Hitmaker. I mean, is it loops? Is it you just going through your emails? Do you, are you humming melodies in your phone? It's, it's, it's a little bit of all that. So, like, sometimes, like, if I do a flip, like a... Lakia, Maya, Bendis with Lotto, which I mm -hmm. collaborated with Cardiac on or whatever. Like, I'll just hit my dog, Paul Cabin, and I'll be like, yo, let's replay this beat, let's redo this or whatever. Then I'll hit Cardiac, like, yo, let's do the drums like this or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then there's other times where people just sending me beat packs and that people that I, that I work with, that I fuck with or whatever, I get the beat pack and then shit. I'll go in, write the song, rearrange it. A lot of the song, what? 99% of the songs you ever hear me do or anything got going on is a demo that we did in the studio with me and my team. Like, it's rare that I go in and just make a song on a spot for somebody, somebody or whatever. I usually, like, I'm a hit, uh, I'm a hit make maker. Good, but I'm a record man, so I'm usually pulling up on you or you pulling up on me and I'm playing mm -hmm. you a record I already think will fit mm -hmm. you, you know? So, with Mind Your Business, I mm -hmm. mean, crazy hit. I got a chance mm -hmm. to see LaKia performing at the Revolt oh, Summit. So, Lakia. you know, see, seeing just artists being able to perform in their natural mm -hmm. habitat is just crazy. Mm -hmm. But it starts with the beat. How did that collaboration come about? Same, same exact way. Me, my dog Ace Red, um, mm -hmm. me and Cardiac and Paul Cabin cooked up the beat. I ain't gonna lie, my engineer, my mix engineer, Jason Joshua, was like, yo, you need to redo this record. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, bet. I redid it. Then I went to the studio with Ace Red. Me and Ace Red wrote mm -hmm. the hook to the song. Mm -hmm. I presented it. I was in New York and I just, Lakia was on a press run and I was just seeing her randomly like, she like, yo, we need to go in the studio. QCP had hit me like, man, you and your little kid need to lock in right now. And shit, that was the first song we did. That's hard. And we did, she did the whole song in one take. Like really? She did, redid the hook, made it her own, did her verse in one take. And then shit, it was done like 12 minutes and we knew it was one of the ones. Crazy. How did Lotto get on it? Was that like a reach That out? was something that Lakia reached out personally to Lotto or whatever. I think they had a history of 
attempting to collaborate on records and do different shit or whatever, but mm-hmm. um, it might not have came to fruition. You know how sometimes when artists want to work with other artists, yeah. it got to be the right record. Mm-hmm. And then that just ended up being the right record. And we had the record done for a little bit, mm-hmm. but I think Lotta was on her grind. She was releasing all her nice. shit or whatever and doing her vibe or whatever. So How long were y'all sitting on that record? A few months, a couple months. Mm. Yeah. But it ended up working out because it kind of like splashed like right before the summer. You know, Lotta was big energy and she was mm-hmm. doing all her different stuff or whatever. So big when she, shout out to Lotta yeah, on her team. Come on, man. man. Lotta was my, my girl. I love her. Um, she always show mad love and she always super humble. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing is, um, when I met Lotto, she was on my song, Thought Box Remix. This mm-hmm. before she put out any of her singles or whatever, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, very early, and we able to plaque up off that. So now we just getting to it, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like on a major run. Big time. So, I mean, working with notable people like Lotto, Lakia, what has been one of your favorite studio sessions with, you know, a song or a an artist that we all know that you have this this year my favorite studio session i ain't gonna lie not because like i i love the song more so than anything else or whatever but uh man them niggas ray j bobby valentino and uh that rsvp shit they got uh, going on yeah bruh how was that session nigga because those personalities off rip before you even cut the mic on i know it's crazy in there bro 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 listen to me mm-hmm. i promise you it's the best studio session i've been in damn near my whole career and what why was that because all them niggas, it's the star. They all used to be in a star. They all used to be in solo artists. So to see them come together and try and match personalities. And then Ray J, just the type of dude that it's never no off switch on him. Like, he's always in that mode. 100% so like, Ray J. It's literally like a reality show, like watching a reality show in person or whatever in real time. Uh, just watching people do it. Big time. So, mm-hmm. album's coming out top of next year. Mm-hmm. What are, can, can you give us some exclusives? I want to seven nine, some exclusives or man, track list, on who Fuck might it. be on uh, it. Let me pull it up. Let me hold pull up on my now, hold real quick. on now. Um, the intro features Ace Red, uh, G Herbo, Doughboy, the second song, Meg The Stallion and uh, Key Glock. Wait, 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 how did you, wait, how, Megan The Stallion and Key Glock? Mm-hmm. Ooh, how did that collaboration come about? Because you see Meg hopping on tracks with people like mm-hmm. Future Now, you know. How, how did that come about? Well, I'm vice president of Empire Records, so I, that established my relationship with Key Glock. Rest in peace mm-hmm. to Dolph or whatever. Sure. Which, um, that I've been trying to do, I was trying to do something early with Dolph, and we always known each other, whatever. But and as far as Megan, I've collaborated with Megan like several so times. times. My right. producer and all my peoples did. Uh, we did Plan B for mm-hmm. her, her single off our last album. And then um, my engineer, Source, it's also her engineer who's recorded every song she's ever put out. So, like, that's just a natural, like, organic type of vibe. But, I mean, come on. nobody, No producer album is fucking with mine this year. Ah. Uh, my next track is features uh, Summer Walker, Ty Dolla Sign, and Tink. The next track features Jeremiah Davido and 2 Chains. The next track is Blue, Young Blue and, or Blue and Chris Brown. The next one is my artist Rocky, 2 Chains, and Dream Doll. The next one is PNB Rock, Big Sean, and Trey Songs. The next one is Money Man and Young Blue. The next one is um, Ludacris and Jeremiah. The next one is Young Blue and my artist Rocky. The next one is Christian Combs, Fabulous, Jeremiah A. Boogie. The next one is Ruby Rose, Danny Lay, and my girl Goldie. The next one is Lil Durk and Moneybag Yo. Ooh. The next one is Down Bad, which is my single out now featuring Ivory Sky, Jeremiah, Fabulous. The next one is also a bonus track, Quickie, which is featuring Queen Naj and Ty Dolla Sign. And then the other bonus track is Stop Box Remix featuring Dream Doll, um, Dream Doll, Chinese Kitty, uh, Dreezy, um, Young M.A., and Mulatto. I want you guys to just take a second to breathe that in. All this shit done, too. Breathe like, that. And it's, it's, it's no rapping. It's cap. Yeah, it's in, it's, anytime it's, artists it's show done. music yeah. in their Apple yeah. music, these are records turned in. All right. They done. Now, you said something before you read that list. Mm-hmm. Excuse me for being controversial, but mm-hmm. you said no other producer or collaboration album is messing with that. No, not at all. Who could you see hit makeup? Versus with producer wise right now current in the game. I don't know. You know, I said this shit before. Like I said, mustard, and he took offense to it or whatever. And that's because why you think though. I used to work um, with mustard back in the day or whatever, and we used to do a bunch of different songs together. And um, he did some bad business with me or whatever, so he just got a bad taste with me. But you know what I'm saying? God bless him. You know what I'm saying on his journey. Um, I also think London on the track would be dope. Me and London are super cool, super Mm -hmm. cordial, good good vibes or whatever. Um, That's two. Give me one more. I don't know. Uh, maybe 
I don't know. Cause OG it, it Parker? Got, yeah. Well, OG Parker's my brother, so mm -hmm. a lot of our collaborations are together, to, so yeah, it would yeah, be kind of hard yeah, for yeah, us yeah. to have a verse against each other. Mm -hmm. But let's say OG Parker just because we both do rap and R&B, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, at a high level. So uh, let's say OG. So, I mean, with doing rap and R&B, because a lot of producers that I know, they can only really get into one bag. Mm -hmm. What type of bag do you have to get into to be able to pull, you know, or no, okay, this is sound I want to create one day, this is sound I want to create the next day? Well, to be honest, like when I came into the game, like I came into the game as Iceberg, signed mm -hmm. a DMX, rest in peace to my dog DMX. But like when people got to know me as Youngberg, you got to think that a lot of my records, I was the rapper, but they were all infused with R&B music. So whether it be Sexy Lady, it was an R&B feature on that. Whether it be The Business feature on Cash It, it was an R&B feature on that. Whether it be Sexy Can I with me and Ray J. So it was always a hybrid of both of the situations. So to me, like, man, if you cut me, like I bleed like R&B mm -hmm. and motherfucker rap music for real for real right top now. three r&b artists i'm gonna give you of mine. all time all time i got mine me and my Jesus. mom talk about this all the time all time anita baker she's number two for me um mary j blige that's my three that she's on my and three. then let's see if you get my last one that's crazy off hype or just like i'm know. talking about voice hit maker voice I don't know, we gotta say like Beyonce or something like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. I, I was gonna go. Um, Who your sh one? Shaka. Shaka. See, that's a little bit before my you time. You feel too. me? Yeah. It's but definitely before we my was, time. Yeah, we was getting beat up. Like our mamas was playing that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Clean, giving us a whoop and cleaning the house, house on you know a saying? Sunday, or you just came home and got your ass. You know what I'm saying? I think Shit. Anita Baker Rapture is the, one of the most flawless mm. R&B albums of all time. And why do you think? Was it because of the musicality of it? Do you Everything. Think? It was the musicality, and she has such a distinct vocal tone mm -hmm. that nobody can touch it. Now, where do you think music is going now? Because, like, you know, I mentioned before, we say this all the time. I feel like TikTok somewhat is ruining music because you only really need 15 seconds now for real yeah but that shit not really the real deal though because when you look at it and you love a tiktok that happened for 15 seconds you might go listen to the song and be like i don't even fuck and with this trash. Record. i just like the part that was in a tiktok now why do you think that is though let me rephrase the question Re why do you believe that these short clips of a full song or grabbing them and then the rest of the song. Like the I just think that these are new apps that are being provided on these platforms and record labels are just trying to find a way to monetize everything. Mm -hmm. Think about, that would be like a question like why is streaming important? Like there was no streaming when I came out. All right. So me and Ray J, the Sexy Can I record, like that record is probably sold like 11, 12 million, but it would never be counted up and made a diamond record because it was hard single sales, ring tones. I don't know if y'all remember ring backs mm -hmm. when you would call a nigga phone and the song would play and all this other that stuff. Counted. or whatever. Yeah, so all them amassing them sales is a diamond record, but streaming wasn't available then. So that's why everything ain't come to fruition. But I mean, I think that we make the music and the record companies are um, in a position to capitalize off of that within whatever deal they put you in. So ultimately, we can sit here and talk shit about like, man, I like this, I don't like it. Nobody signed a record deal with a gun in their head. It is what it is, you know what I'm saying? So I think the best way to talk to artists, especially with me being an executive, is just to adapt and just make shit work for you. you know? Now being an executive, how are you able to diff differentiate, mom, you'll be proud I got that word, you differentiate your producing career from being able to make these executive plays and motions. They all won. Mm -hmm. I'm a real record man. I make the record. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nobody, like, that's an executive that's operating at the level that I'm operating. Like, yo, like, I'm sure that they might be in a studio or they might be a dope photographer mm -hmm. and know how to take pictures of people with their backs to them or whatever. But me, like, you go in with me on an executive level, I create your project from start to finish. I'm usually the executive producer when it comes to that so with with, with y'all support and records like fucking mm -hmm. a tank cater featuring two chains mm -hmm. which is a top 10 record now or whatever it's kind of like i link with tank we had a good vibe and i went and i did the whole album with her and i'm an nr so and that was the question i was gonna get to mm -hmm. how did that relationship come about because she has just an amazing catalog and then putting your sauce on it mm -hmm. it's like psh it was really organic. You know, her manager, uh, Mickey Halstead, is somebody that I've been in locked in with since I was a kid. We all from Chicago. I wasn't really familiar with Tink because I'm like seven, eight years older than Tink. Mm -hmm. But when I got the job at Atlantic, I mean, excuse me, Empire, they um, 
Mickey came to me and was like, yo, I want you to work with Tink, which was pretty interesting because she had wrote and produced all, not, not she had wrote, not, excuse me, not produced, she had wrote every record that she had did by mm -hmm. herself prior. But with me, you know, I come with the whole gang of killers, like songwriters, co-writers, mm -hmm. co-producers, all this other stuff. So I just felt um, it was honor to, to, like, for her to have, success and have a co-following to open up her thing and now shit i ain't gonna lie we on a third album right now the second the first album was like the warm up the second album through the roof right now she sold more records than artists that's on major labels she's still independent now this third album is the knockout punch now this last question how important is it for artists or do you believe artists should stay independent or should they cross over because with you being a record man and you being able to see both sides of the business do you see a lot of artists that you know that come into the game hot and strong and then they just kind of filter off because they didn't really understand the business? What would you tell the artists that's watching this? Um, to all the artists that's watching right now, um, my whole thing is do what works for you. Like if you're in a financial situation where you might need the label services and you might need the money, then you need to go do that. But in a position that we are right now with um, 18, 1800 and then myself at Make It Sound, like we got great artists that's working with us. Shout out to my dog, Neek Bucks. His new single drops on um, the 30th of September. It's called Mask Off, featuring 2 Chainz. Shout out to Rocky. Shout out to Ivory Scott. Shout out to everybody that's with us. So if you have a self-contained team and you work with great people like I do as far as Billy J mm -hmm. um, and all the different layers of our team, Gisette, um and all these great people that have on a same like mind page to go and make it happen for the artist and I think that you should stay as independent as possible and then once you build yourself up go get the bag you know big time ladies and gentlemen if you haven't already when this magical man called hit maker drops his album we're gonna be expecting that mustard if you want that versus he right here god bless you mustard <laughs> we appreciate y'all make sure you guys like the video subscribe to the channel once again i am the most energetic entertainer manny supreme and i have my brother in the studio with him tell him <laughs>